view. Like, look at the freaking, like, look, look at that! Yeah, the mountains. Look at that! It's like they're floating in the clouds. Right? So we just went to the hot springs. It's super bright right here. There's like the sun was like right, it's like right behind me. We're all starving because I didn't, it's like 1.30 in the afternoon or two in the afternoon and none of us really ate. Um, so we're going to do that. But first we're gonna come look at this water. Oh, it looks sketch. Okay. See if I can walk through this path with a like $3,000 camera in my hand. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so sunny here. Mm -hmm. So nice. It's a bit slippery, but there's some really good guys. Mm -hmm. Second waterfall of this year. I think we should start counting them. So this is, this is number two. <laughs> so it is about 7.30 in the morning in the tiny house. I just woke up and um, it's, it's definitely chilly. It's about eight degrees. Once again, empty. <laughs> I've been having a lot of problems keeping my kindling box um, full because I've only been cutting enough kindling for like a couple of days, so. We're gonna go out, we're gonna cut just enough kindling to start a fire, and then while the tiny house is warming up with the fire, I'm gonna go and cut a whole bunch more. This is enough kindling for this morning. Uh, it's enough for uh, one fire anyway. I also need pieces that I call like larger medium pieces. They're pieces that are slightly larger than kindling, but uh, smaller than my kind of regular pieces. And what uh, that does in my tiny wood stove is it helps to keep the fire going after the kindling has burned down but it helps to keep the wood stove up to temperature while I'm trying to get some of my larger pieces to light on fire. I only need a couple of those to light the fire and then uh, once the fire is going inside, we will come back out and uh, we will do some more. It is starting to snow like crazy, so um, I wanna get this done before it snows too, too much and go from there. Our kindling, oh, ready to start a fire because my hands are cold. So lately I've been using these um, these fire starters. We have to get some more today, so that's another thing that's on our list of chores to do. They uh, are a lot easier to use than like paper. You know, you have to light a fire several times a day, or I mean, depending on how cold it is. Usually, I'm lighting two fires a day. I usually light one fire in the morning, like we are right now. So 
I'm just gonna put those medium pieces, actually, we'll put it under the stove. I haven't really been using my under stove storage enough lately, because it's so, it's actually, it's actually really dirty. Good morning, Ninja. Hello, sweetie. Good morning. lot I have to do today and uh, on the days where I have a lot of chores to do sometimes I like it's just easier to just do them in my pajamas like <laughs> I also have a buttload of laundry to do so um, is and in the mornings when I'm chopping wood I think I've noticed the last couple of times I've been filming I've just been like in my pajamas because sometimes sometimes that's it's just easier that way So I've learned that when we're splitting wood with uh, a splitting axe, it's more important to have accuracy rather than power. I used to think that it was all about power, and it is to an extent, like the back of my arms and my core get a really big workout. But if you are using a splitting axe, accuracy is more important. So what I do is I try and have like a, like a straight line, make a straight line with my axe, and then the line, the wood will split right along here. This is kind of what I'm dealing with here. All of this wood down here has been cleared out. So I want to knock some of these pieces up here down so that uh, I can get at them. But the trick is that there's snow back here. Let's see if I can clear off some of the snow first. No, a lot of that snow is still not going anywhere. So I'm gonna try and cause a bit of a wood avalanche because everything kind of up to here is all like, like it's just snow and it's heavy on the part. I guess that's a way to move it. I like just, I like just swept here. I wanted to talk about um, like tiny wood stove shopping and how I found a tiny wood stove that was good for like everyday daily use. So what I found is that most of the tiny wood stoves when I was shopping for them um, 
weren't actually meant for like everyday daily use. I don't know if they were just made out of like thinner material. Uh, so when you are shopping for a wood stove, like, like a, a tiny wood stove, I would absolutely recommend um, making sure that if you're using it for daily use, you know, such as me, like the tiny wood stove is my only source of heat, uh, that you make sure that you read the manuals. That's, that's what I discovered I had to do. I had to read every single manual and usually hidden somewhere in the manual was this product is perfect for hunting cabins, um, you know, um, like vacation properties, but not for like everyday use. Uh, so that's one thing that I learned when I was shopping for a wood stove. So just be aware of what, like what you are needing in a wood stove. And if you need one every single day, like me, uh, to maybe go with a different brand. I mean, I've talked about my tiny wood stove a lot. Um, this tiny wood stove is, uh, is a dwarf stove. This one is the 4KW, uh, which is the second largest one. So there's one, there's wood stoves that are larger than this one and wood stoves that are smaller than this one. I picked this one in particular because it had the large cooktop. Uh, I wanted to have a surface that was large enough for me to put like my full like big Dutch oven on top of it, as well as like a regular size kettle. The next thing that you may not know if you are shopping for a tiny wood stove because I didn't even think of this. Like now that I, like, so before I got my tiny wood stove, I had zero experiences with wood stoves in general. <laughs> zero, none, absolutely none. Um, your burn time is gonna be short. It's gonna be significantly shorter than you probably think. Um, what I have found is like today, let me just, let me just close that. So today, for example, my tiny wood stove has, has been burning all morning. It's like noon, I think it's like 12.30 in the afternoon. It's been burning since like about 6.30 this morning. So once I have my wood stove like burning for a couple of hours, then my burn time does get longer. Um, I can usually load up my wood stove and have it go for, <laughs> I'm trying to think, maybe two hours, um, but generally, if my wood stove has been running for a little while, my burn time is longer. I was kind of hoping to get three or four hours of burn time, and that's what someone had mentioned in the comments on another one of my YouTube videos, is they were kind of like, really? Like, like you know, you only get like an hour and a half of burn time? Like, I was really hoping for three or four hours. Me too! <laughs> After it burns for an hour, an hour and a half, it's usually warmed up the space to like an appropriate temperature. Now, usually if I have a day off like today um, and I like I, I want to keep my wood stove lit as long as possible because it just, you know, it helps to have, you know, even though the air might be like really warm, um, the longer I have the wood stove running, the more it warms up the objects in the house, random things like my chairs, the floor, uh, and that just helps to like hold heat. So be aware that your fire, the, with the tiny wood stove, your firebox is smaller, something that I didn't even think of. Uh, so your burn times are going to be a lot shorter than you think. I've talked about ways before that you can extend your burns. You know, pellets are um, are a really good one. Like, uh, like I'll use pellets if I'm trying to extend my burns. Um, you can also use like high BTU logs. I have never personally used high BTU logs. And the reason being is because I have to be careful because I can roast myself out of my tiny house with just regular wood. Um, so that's, I guess, one of the benefits of not having like, you know, my tiny wood stove burn for eight hours like you maybe would with a full size wood stove because it gets really warm in here. The third thing that I didn't think of when I got a tiny wood stove that nobody told me about, nobody talked about, uh, is your flue will most likely need to be cleaned more often. So when I got this tiny wood stove, the, the manual said that I needed to inspect the flue uh, like every you know week or so for the first month. Um, and then after that, uh, you can expect, you can inspect it monthly. So. That's what I did. I was ex I was inspecting my flu like super super regularly, um, and then now I uh, I just inspect it like once a month or so. Uh, it's really easy. I just 
take um, and like maybe I'll show it you know on YouTube how I do it one day if I can get the camera back here because I it's kind of small and finagly I don't know if I'll be able to film it on my own but anyway um, those are the really three main things that nobody had really prepared me for like nobody you know th the thing I've found about watching tiny wood stove videos on YouTube is that no one really told me about what it was like to live with a tiny wood stove. It is different than if you have a full-size wood stove. Most folks around here have full-size wood stoves. Almost everyone heats with wood around here because electric heat is the only alternative and boy, electric heat is expensive. This is not what this video is about. I'm gonna make another one talking about like breaking down the costs of heating your house with wood because there's kind of a lot to it. Uh, for us here, heating with wood is absolutely cheaper than heating with electric because electric is the only other alternative. So those are the three main things. Uh, make sure that you are getting a tiny wood stove that's meant for daily use. Uh, so read the manual and uh, feel free to ask the, you know, the, uh, the seller or the manufacturer that you're buying your tiny wood stove from. Like I said, this is a dwarf stove. It is meant for daily use. I've been really happy with it so far. The wood stove that I had considered before the dwarf stove was uh, the Hobbit stove. Such cute names. Make sure you're getting a wood stove that's meant for daily use. Uh, be aware that your burn time is going to be very short. Uh, there is a tiny home manufacturer like in my area and I have spoken to them before and you know one of the things that they actually say is they are like we don't recommend clients only heat with their tiny wood stove. Now I'm doing it, you can do it, it is possible, uh, it is not necessarily easy. I'll maybe make another video about that later on. There's so many videos that I want to make on the topic of the tiny wood stove because it's so cool. And then the third thing is just be aware that your flue may need to be cleaned more than, you know, a full size wood stove because your flue pipe is just going to be smaller. Inspect that. Nobody wants a fire. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, those are the things that I've learned since having the tiny wood stove, it looks like the sun's coming out. Um, if you have any other questions about like the tiny wood stove, feel free to uh, let me know in the comments and uh, I will try my best to answer them. Oh my gosh, the sun is really, really coming out.